My experience growing up was pretty good. The worst thing that really happened to me was something that I didn't even remember, and that was a divorce that took place after I was born when I was only two or three. But I was luckily adopted by a loving father. I grew up in a small town, went to a small town Pentecostal church. I, growing up, saw both the good sides and the bad sides of religion. And I saw what happened in small town churches and found myself wondering, is this all that church is? I got involved with my youth group. I was going to services every weekend, going to events, going to camps. I gave my life to Christ when I was a teenager, at least in my head. But I wasn't really, in the, really living the lifestyle that he called me to live in my heart. And that kind of compounded as I got older. And when I graduated high school and went off to college, that's when my faith really started to slip. I convinced myself that the Christian religion and the Bible were just man-made constructs in order to justify my lifestyle. That way I didn't have to be responsible for my actions. I started hanging around people that reinforced my, my lifestyle. I, I started living a lifestyle that was focused mainly on pleasure. I was doing anything I wanted with no one telling me otherwise. You know, if I die, I'm still going to heaven, so I can kind of live however I want. I started drinking, drinking for the benefit of getting drunk. Everyone else was doing it. I could have a, a good time with it as well. I chased women. I slowly started to go into the spiral of addiction with uh, pornography, and it slowly and very effectively ate away at, at who I was. I was an inwardly nasty and selfish person. I felt like I knew more than other people. I judged others harshly without really having a reason to. I felt superior to those around me. I was arrogant. I treated those closest to me like garbage. I only gave to people if they had something to offer me in return. I lied and rationalized using others. I hit senior year of college incredibly broken and messed up on the inside. I was depressed. I didn't really feel like I had a purpose. I isolated myself from almost everyone. I had given so much of myself away that I didn't really have anything left to give. I honestly thought that the life I was living was all that there was for me. I remember walking out of Ethics class one day and I remember standing in the plaza outside of my classroom thinking to myself, if truth exists, then where can I find it? Is truth an actual thing or is it all just subjective? And that question just kind of sat in my brain. I started praying to God about, you know, if there, if there is truth, then God help me find it. I knew that I was pretty much helpless. I had done all I could do and what I was doing wasn't making me happy. I needed to find what that was. There was just a change in my attitude where I, I just didn't want to live the life I was living anymore. I didn't want to be a bad person. I didn't want to have broken relationships. I didn't want to have these addictions. And I remember vividly an event in my life where I prayed to get direction and know where to go. And I was still struggling with my addiction. And the next day I woke up and I remember feeling very strange in my mind because that day when I woke up, that addiction had pretty much disappeared. It was as if a hole in my heart had been filled. It was as if this was the Holy Spirit telling me, you're on the right track. To continue my story further, I have to go back. Um, Steve Glover, the pastor, is actually my uncle. And whenever I was in a junior in, in college, I believe, he actually gave me the book, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. And when I got it, I, I kind of put on this face like, oh, hey, you know, thanks for the book. And I remember taking it up to my room after I got it and just kind of looking at it puzzled. And I set it on my nightstand in my room at home and told myself, I don't really need to read this book because I'm not an atheist. I still believe that God exists, so I don't need this. And so I set it on my nightstand and kind of forgot about it. I continued to live the lifestyle I was living. And now fast forward to where I'm coming home kind of on this truth search and I walk into my room and the first thing that I see when I walk in and set down my bag is that book sitting in the exact same place on my nightstand. I just remember being drawn to it because I opened the front cover of it and read the first chapter and 
all of the things I was struggling with and all of the philosophies that my ethics class had brought up, the first chapter of that book pretty much went through and debunked each one by one. And the only thing that was left was this idea of the Christian worldview. And for the first time, I, I realized that this is the truth that I had been looking for. I just remember reading the rest of that book, I devoured it, and my life started to change. As I was led to the person of Jesus Christ, the idea of him and, and who he is really started to change me. I realized that I was a broken person and no better than anybody else. And I just remember thinking to myself, that's, I wanna be like him, that's who I wanna be. It set me on this path of restoration. After I graduated, I started going to church again. I got involved with a men's uh, life group at my church Bible study. I was praying again, I was reading my Bible every day. I was doing devotionals. And I'll never forget when the first time that I came downstairs and I had dressed up to go to Sunday night service and they looked at me kind of puzzled. And they said, where are you going? And I said, I'm going to Sunday night church. And they, the look that on their face was just this bewilderment of who are you and what have you done with our son that has been over the past couple of years. So after I really started to be changed through the power of the Holy Spirit in, in my heart, I was still looking for where to go and what to do. And God opened this door with DC3 where Steve offered me a job to come down and do video and live streaming here at the church. And when I walked into a service, I felt like this is where I belonged and this is what God had for me. Now that I'm here today, I know that to be the case because I knew who I was then and how God changed me to where I am now. I feel like I've grown more in the past two and a half years than I did the entire four years that I had at college. And for me, that's a big deal because when I was depressed, I felt like I wasn't amounting to anything and the life I was living was pointless. But after moving here and really working and committing my life to Christ, through his power, I'm able to be something that's larger than myself. I'm able to help people. I'm able to uh, be a part of something great. I think the biggest difference for me now is I have passion and direction in my life, and that's to pursue Christ with everything that I have in me. My name is Ethan, and my backstory would still be my story if not for Jesus Christ and what he's done in my life.